59-year-old Raul Garcia of Cuban birth. In 1994, I was arrested and charged for importation of cocaine. I was arrested with 155 kilos of cocaine and we were sentenced to 20 years in prison. What happens when your sentence is up and you expect to return home, but you have no home, no country? Having ended his prison sentence in March 2010, and having been served with a deportation order that he be deported to Cuba, and a detention order that he be detained um, pending deportation to Cuba, we now found that Cuba would not accept him and that effectively there was no country that he could be sent to. So that was the uniqueness of Mr. Garcia's case. The country of your birth has denied your repatriation. The country you were convicted in fails to deport you. And you are left to wait back in prison for three years. Finally, two hunger strikes later, the court grants your release into society, but you are left stranded. You cannot work, you cannot open a bank account, you cannot fill a prescription unless someone else does it for you. You have no access to public hospitals. One of the conditions that was set by court and immigration was that I am not to have any documents at all. I am being restricted from having passports, license, IDs. I don't have any way of proving who I am unless I am being taken by the authorities or because I am well known today through the media in this country. I found myself in a very difficult situation because I had no future. I had, um, I couldn't see an end to this situation. Um, I wasn't accepted to return to my country of birth. I wasn't accepted to return to the country where I was raised, which is the United States. I, I wasn't accepted in the country that I, I did at the time, which is Barbados. Um, I, I, as a matter of fact, I wasn't accepted in any place. does the Caribbean see itself? What happens when the human rights of an individual are publicly compromised? Is there a commotion in the streets? Are voices merged as one? How united are the citizens of the Caribbean? And how much are they protected by their leaders or their domestic law? Cuba never said that Mr. Garcia was not a citizen of Cuba. In fact, the Cuban government actually gave a Cuban passport to Mr. Garcia in um, 2010, after his prison sentence came to an end in Barbados. But what the Cuban government said is that, look, while we concede that having been born in Cuba, he is a citizen of Cuba, under Cuba's laws, he is not entitled to return to Cuba or to be repatriated to Cuba or, in, or even to be deported to Cuba. So our argument was that, look, even though he is not a de jure stateless person, you know, theoretically he, he has a, a, a country of nationality, but he is a de facto stateless person because he cannot be, he cannot return to Cuba. So to all intents and purposes, he does not have a, a native country that he can return to. If there is any country who really recognizes the positive part of it, um, all I need is to be accepted into 
any society who wishes or who is willing to accept me as a citizen or as a resident. In September 2013, Raul Garcia was invited to return to Cuba as a Cuban national. Several things are responsible for that. I think the fact that the Barbadian court gave Mr. Garcia his freedom, I think that would have weighed with the Cuban government. The type of person Mr. Garcia showed himself to be. As a successful prison artist, his passion and determination to paint encouraged him to spend 18 to 20 hours a day working on his art in the confines of his prison cell. This won him one gold medal, 10 silver medals, and four bronze at the renowned NIFCA competition in Barbados. His work was exhibited at the Whole Town Festival, Bridgetown Market, and even New York City. Since 2003, when he first joined the prison's art class, he has produced more than 200 paintings. But what does this all mean? Now that Raul Garcia is no longer stateless, do we forget the past? Do we close our eyes to violations against our human rights in the Caribbean? We are now mature members of the international community. Uh, we need to behave like mature members and we need to understand that if, if there are instances of stateless persons or persons with refugee status in need of a country to take them in, that we too, we too, we should see ourselves in that light, that we can, um, we can, um, you know, up, uphold some of those responsibilities that nations um, are required to uphold, and also that we need to look at our structures and make sure that we, we put in place uh, proper de detention facilities that uh, respect human dignity and people's human rights.